traditionally, intelligence is exclusively linked to humans. So in a traditional philosophical discourse, humans are intelligent and the world is intelligible. And so when we now have, um, when you take that just for one moment, you have the human on one side and you have the rest of the world on the other side. You can repeat this in multiple ways. Humans are thinking things in a world of mere things. Humans are subjects in a world composed of objects, i.e. they're completely exhausted by the natural processes, for example, or chemical processes that happen in them, sort of classical concept of a leech as a machine, for example. So if I now decouple the concept of intelligence from the exclusive link to the human and extend it to leeches, to machines, to microbes, to birds, then I do at the very least two things. One thing is I change this juxtaposition of the human here and the rest of the world there, and I make the human intelligent, but it's a form of intelligence that is one entry in, into a series of intelligences. And I do something to animals, leeches or microbes, and also actually to machines if they're intelligent, and I lift them into a different space from where they were before. So uncoupling intelligence from the exclusive link to the human almost inevitably means that I repose the question, what is a human? What is the role or place of the human in the world? What is the status of non-human intelligences in the world? I actually can sort of expand this for one moment to, the, to leeches, for example, or to bacteria. So when we, you all have heard about CRISPR the last few months, or actually the last few weeks. CRISPR was not invented by humans. CRISPR was invented almost three and a half billion years ago by bacteria. It's actually part of a bacterial immune system to fight off viruses, right? So in a certain way, humans have merely repurposed CRISPR, but it remains a living natural technology. So if you just soak that in for a moment, you have a concept of technology or of a tool that is no longer juxtaposed to nature as we usually do it. So there are natural things and there are human-made things. And then you could say, my God, the concept of technology or machines that we have inherited from the Industrial Revolution that is sort of saying, here are tools and machines, or, and here is nature, is actually unfortunate. It's a misunderstanding of how we have to build tools or techniques. They have to be aligned with natural processes or work alongside them. And then you enter also philosophical terrain, because the ways in which we have defined ourselves as being the inventors of tools that do not come from nature, you don't find here, and therefore we're outside of nature, fails. So I'm very interested in these little, seemingly everyday, but simultaneously very strongly philosophical questions.